Okay, well, I'm really loud, but I, there are people online. Um, so it's my great pleasure um, to introduce David Newman. Now, Dave and I have actually known each other for, I, I won't even say how long. In fact, I'll just sit down for a moment. Sit down? So that I have to stare at you from above. Um, so, so Dave is, is director of the MIT Media Lab. So this is the space that we've been taking advantage of for years now. And I thought it was time to actually say, well, thank you. Oh, you're and it's very spectacular. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah, and you're professor of Aero Astro at MIT, um, former deputy administrator of NASA, so that's pretty cool. Um, sailor who can fix hydraulic problems out at sea with olive oil. That's right. That's right. That's pretty using engineering knowledge. Um, and then where we came to know one another, longtime director of the technology and policy program, which I graduated from 30 years ago. Me too, um, me too. <laughs> so, so I asked David and I, I'll, I'll, I, to just share some thoughts about, you know, the background of the Media Lab, some of the initiatives that you've got going, mm -hmm. and uh, how that goes into you know, data and the platform world. And I exactly. think you have some slides, perhaps? I do. So I'm going to. I do, I'm gonna, can I yeah. take you on a journey? Would you please? All right. All right. I know I'm the last thing between you and that really nice reception out there. So, uh, but I think we'll have some fun. I hope, I hope we have some fun. It's an honor to be here. Thanks, Jeff, so much. Hopefully you've had a great day. I got to peek in in the morning and, and now I got to listen to the, the last session as well. So welcome to the Media Lab. I'm glad you've been here before and keep coming and do keep coming. So uh, with that, uh, a little journey throughout the solar system, something different. So at the um, Media Lab, it's all about people. People first. Um, yes, we're inventive. We design technologies and experiences that hope to transform the world. Our mission is to actually uh, serve society. And so if we can come up with inventive technologies and experiences, because we have artists, designers, engineers, and scientists on the faculty, uh, then we've done our job. So we really work at that cruxus, the synergy, kind of uh, transdisciplinary uh, design across literally art, science, engineering, design. So welcome to the Media Lab. As promised, though, I want to take you a little bit further out to come back home to Spaceship Earth. So um, I'm a rocket scientist. And um, I have three fundamental questions. Um, are we alone in the universe? Um, are there other habitable planets? Mm, I have 6,000 exoplanets, so we're checking. And is there life elsewhere? Uh, you can ask me about intelligent life if you want. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I spend my time thinking about Spaceship Earth, as I call Earth, um, exploring out into the solar system. That's Mars, our, our sister. Um, we have Mars missions. If, if you don't know, we're on Mars. Literally, we're on Mars today. The MIT experiment is called MOXIE, and we're making oxygen on Mars. First time interplanetary we've ever been able to do in situ resource utilization, or ISRU. We don't make a lot, only six grams in a run, but it's pretty awesome to be the first ones who make oxygen on Mars. So um, not enough to keep you alive, but uh, first it's going to be for fuel, because that round trip with humans, like I want my fuel depots there before we bring you home. Um, and we're recording sounds on Mars, but, all right, what's this? Audience participation time is from Webb. <laughs> I've worked on this. <laughs> I can't tell you how many years. <laughs> it was really expensive, yes, but we didn't cancel it. And we're going to prove what dark energy and dark matter are. Only 96% of, you know, the unknown universe. So we only know 4% today. A little unsatisfactory. So um, I bring you Webb, and uh, this is truly uh, transformative and revolutionary. So you can also ask me at web, about web. Um, but uh, it's so awesome to see these <laughs> images. I'm an engineer. I didn't think it was wor would work. Uh, a little miracle, actually, and a lot of great engineering and a lot of really good science. So all 500 things went right, and we're at the Lagrangian point taking awesome, not just images. We're searching to find uh, the answers to those questions I posed. Um, I could spend a lot of time uh, talking to you about uh, Mars and <laughs> living on Mars. I want to talk to you about innovation because I know you're interested in platforms and what you're here about. So real quickly, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, tell you a little bit about the innovation platform that I developed. Now I use it at the Media Lab, but I developed it when I was at NASA. Um, continuous innovation, 80% of innovation, just down there in the green spot. Just come to work every day, be excellent, and do great things. Sounds easy, but as you all know, not, not that easy on the right. 
revolutionary technologies. That's where I love. That's my sweet spot. I love to invent technologies and shrink wrap people in funky spacesuits and try to think about getting to the moon and Mars. I'll show you a little bit of that. That's um, a big technology push and no new business model. Over to the, the left, the red, that's disruptive innovation. That's a new business model and just keep your same old technology. But if we are really smart, uh, transformative technology is what I call, let's do the revolutionary technology and the transformative business model change at the same time. It's hard, it's tough, but that's where the big things happen. So we benchmarked NASA. Now I'm in the process of strategic planning and looking at uh, the Media Lab as well. Continuous innovation. Again, it's people, it's technologies, it's your organization. Just taking a look at what we're doing. A lot of outreach, a lot of diversity, a lot of the things I just heard in the last session. Um, you know, just, just, but just do it excellent every day. So I'm going to show you one example of uh, a few examples of each of these. So I gave an award for failure at NASA. You know, I was 18,000 person agency, 75,000 contractors, and people wear shirts. Failure is not an option. That was great for Apollo 13, but that's not great in an organization that needs to move fast. And uh, so it was culture change. It was culture change. So say, no, we're going to be. We have to take risks, and if we're going to do great things, we can't be this risk averse um, culture. Uh, so it's called lean forward, fail smart. I mean, you need to fail smartly. Um, here's one of my winners. I had a lot of applicants. Uh, you know, we are going back to the moon. Uh, it's called the Artemis program. We're going back to the moon, and we need a lunar lander. So this is at Kennedy Space Center. Yeah, that, that one didn't work out too well. <laughs> no one got hurt. Uh, there's no people on board, but we haven't been to the moon for a long time. If you notice, I'm the Apollo program professor at MIT. I really want to get back to the moon. It's been 50 years. See, now look, a little discretionary money, a little extra design, a little more work. A few months later, they know, now this is, that's, it, that's, that's just nighttime. They, they didn't burn up. It was a successful flight. Um, so celebrating failure just to, to, you know, to be innovative and to move forward. You might uh, know uh, about, this is for the International Space Station Public-Private Partnerships, PPP. So um, you know, I don't get all the credit, but I was there at NASA when we uh, said we were going to change and investing in the private sector. NASA always, and the government always invested in the private sector, but we did business a different way. So it's over to the red. Yeah, we, want, it, we it needed to disrupt the business model. Not a new, te new technology. I love Elon, SpaceX, great, they're rocking it. Uh, so it's not new technology, but that's a disruptive business model. You know, and we were on board, and we were partners, and said, we've got to get this right. And uh, so far, so good. So it takes so I, you know, Northrop and SpaceX and our international colleagues as well. And next is humans. Well, SpaceX, of course, is already delivering our humans. And uh, Boeing uh, will very shortly. They passed all their tests, and now they get there. So different way to do business, disrupt the business model. Um, but not revolutionary technology, but uh, so far so good, especially at the large government agencies working with um, all kinds of businesses. Okay, then revolutionary technology. I'm going to show you really quickly about uh, some fun technology, technology that we're having fun with. Um, it's kind of near and dear to my heart. When I get to do research, I try to shrink wrap you all, make you awesome explorers to search for life, remember that goal, um, or for medical purposes here on Earth, or to make you Superman, Superwoman, whatever, whatever superhero you want to be. Um, so we designed these suits. I'm just going to show you, uh, I think I'm going to show you, I actually want to show you this slide big. So we just invented a new prototype. And uh, it's from the Media Lab with wearable sensing, uh, new 3D knitting machines. We are going to become interplanetary. We are sending people out, not to send people out. We're going to send it so we can learn about Spaceship Earth. So in this new prototype, it's a knit structure. Because how else can, uh, oh, I probably didn't. I need to give you a little spacesuit history. Right now, we have conventional gas pressurized 160 kilo you know, man in a can. So that's not how we're, you know. We're not going to learn a lot on the moon or Mars. So I kind of think we should you know, wear a 20 kilo, pretty cool looking outfit. Um, these are integrated. We just invented these gallium um, pressure sensors. They track. You wear your suit. It's all wearable. We scan you. You get your own suit, custom designed for you. And it has to apply pressure. It applies a third of an atmosphere. That's a, it's a big ask. Medical technologies need about 10%. And so we have new multifunctional fibers. Um, you get to dress yourself. That's called donning and doffing in the spacesuit world. You know, you, have to, you don't have a lot of partners out there, so you want to be able to dress yourself. We shrink wrap you, literally. I mean, we 
with that zipper. All of this comes out of a 3D knitting machine, which is the first time we've tried that. Uh, the, the black, you kind of saw the inside, those black fibers are actually polyethylene um, carbon doped uh, nanotubes. Uh, and that's the world supplies in that little prototype right there uh, because we were able to make threads out of polyethylene carbon doped nanotubes, put them in threads, and voila, put them in a, a sleeve after, after some hard work. So anyhow, that's what's coming to you. I could sit up here and talk to you about a lot about technology. This is what uh, some of the companies also think about you. So we're going to have some fun when you're on the moon. You can jump six to seven times your height. Uh, so let me talk about the, the fourth piece, the really hard stuff. Let's have the revolutionary technology and the new um, business model, new organizational structure. Yeah, finding life on another planet. I count that. James Webb, I actually would put that there. All kinds of, um, all kinds of other things in aviation, in climate change. Um, so now I'm going to zoom into the Media Lab and kind of highlight uh, 37 years of history in you know, two minutes for you and where we're going in the future. So I put up seven areas of major impact from the lab. Um, way back in the 80s, digital design wasn't a thing, <laughs> so it had to be invented <laughs> and convince people that design was going to become digital. Um, constructionist learning. Now we take it for granted, but we know kids and adults, we all learn better by play. And if you construct, literally construct the pieces, you'll remember it. I'm a you know, professor, so if I give a lecture, even this talk, oh, you're going to remember like 15% of it. Not, not adequate there either. So, but if you build and learn and code and you're doing the work with me, kind of in the studio model, that's what we do here in the you know, atelier model, you're going to get it. You're going to learn you know, by doing and constructing. Digital communications, this is just a great old image. I love um, e-ink was in invented here at the lab and some other pretty revolutionary technologies. Yeah, um, you know, newspapers were going to be digital someday, we thought, back three decades ago, right? Funny thing, yeah. And so what you can do with all those newspapers? I don't know, we could wrap the fish in them. So this was called fish wrap, and, and e-ink came out of some of the, the early decade of the lab's work. Fast forward, then we actually invent new disciplines, has, well, I guess we don't color within the lines here in the media lab. So, um, you know, existing disciplines are a little ordinary, a little static, not too exciting. So we just kind of invent our own tangible media so that media could really be tangible. We love media. We're the media lab. But, but what about tangible media? Uh, it's Hiroshi Ishii's group. Uh, Ross Picard has uh, invented effective computing effective computing with an A, not just computing, not just computer science, but effective computing. Why? So that we can really study health and well, well-being and, you know, effective things. We think we can be more impactful in those realms. Human augmentation, if you walk through the lab, you literally will see bionic people running around because it's human version 2.0. So we have lots of folks here who are bionic with the um, prosthetic limbs and robotic legs and arms, and that's just uh, what we, you know, no one should be disabled. We all have abilities, and we just want to accentuate everyone's ability, because everyone has abilities. Sensing, seeing, Internet of Things, uh, that's us in spades. We're you know, out in marshes and measuring and monitoring um, things on Earth. Actually, now, just kind of invented, and we're deploying Internet of Things for the oceans. Super awesome, because we really need to understand what our oceans you know, are made of and biodiversity. So IoT for oceans, land, and uh, Guess what? Space too. Uh, racial and uh, social justice and designing with impact are, uh, again, really quick, quick uh, history of the lab. Where are we going in the future? Uh, we're studying life with AI. Uh, you know, of course it's here. Um, how can we ask the right questions up front? That's what we care about. We care about responsible AI. We care about empowerment. Um, so we have a lot of AI going on at, at MIT. But we have our, our passion, and this is the, the place for responsible AI and ethics, and just asking those right questions right up front to get it right. We think we can. I mentioned a human 2.0. That's not water. That's uh, for you know, the bionic people of the future to just get rid of disabilities for, for all. Big ask. Uh, of course, it's going to be half the human brain, and guess what? Half, half a AI brain as well, and that's already happening, and we're already working on, literally working on those surgeries in implants to, to make these happen, kind of make these dreams, something we think about 10 years in the future, make those dreams into to reality. 
um, digital mental health. We, about half the faculty and even half the folks here, uh, work on health and, and wellness and well-being, and we always have um, through the digital, you know, our specialty is kind of digital and, and media, of course, but not just media as you mean communications, media, material, I mentioned tangible, med uh, tangible um, media, that's really through material, material invention, and then biological, genetics and biology too. And so when we take a look at digital mental health, um, it's emerging as a major theme of the lab. Why? Uh, you know, because the time picks you, you don't pick your time, as JFK said. And uh, we have a crisis, we have an enormous pandemic, we know, of course, a COVID pandemic, but we have a mental health pandemic, and how can we help? How can we bring our skills and tools to the table? And we think it's right here in, in, um, in this area. Cultivating creativity, same story, and going through these last couple of years, um, hope you're all doing well and your families. Uh, I know one thing, you know, I sure can't be creative on Zoom. You know, so as we emerge, what are the tools? We think, we literally think that there needs to be a global movement of creativity. And uh, so we wanna, we wanna do that. We wanna partner probably with all of you and see if we can make that happen. It's the play back in, it's the create, it's a creative, it's um, you know, the excitement and innovation that we wanna bring um, to everyone. Lifelong Kindergarten by Mitch Resnick. You see Todd Mack over here, symphonies for cities, meaning you come to the symphony and everyone makes the, everyone is in the orchestra, all the kids, all the adults, everyone, you know, you're, you're not a passive uh, recipient, you are a player, you're playing in the orchestra, so city symphonies and lifelong kindergarten, a lot of, a lot of really wonderful work. Um, yeah, everyone wants to know what our response is. I said, well, for 20 years, uh, you know, we've been in that verse. And uh, we don't think about it as escapism and being in a game. We think about it as the humans in the center of experiences, and we always design for humans. And so we envision a future where it's a better verse, and that's empowering people. And um, how do we design intentionally for experiences? Sure, I have digital and virtual tools. They're great, and I can fill rooms with them. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is the human interaction. I'm glad you're all here in person and, and listening to me. And uh, we're not going to really put the media lab up in space. That's just, that's just, a, that's just, a, that's just a joke to see if you're still awake and listening. And one of my one of my designers downstairs thinks that's pretty funny. Maybe we should. I, we invented something and, and and developed something. Jeff and I, you know, lifelong lifelong uh, professors and colleagues. And uh, you know, way back uh, when I was much younger, I helped uh, start the International Space University. And it's great, and it's going on. It truly is international. And I said, ah, but the only thing we got wrong is we actually still don't have a semester in space yet. So uh, I probably won't stop until I have a semester on the moon, you know, where, we, where students can literally. Virtually, we can take thousands and millions and hopefully billions of learners, but we still should fill up that classroom on the moon, I'm pretty sure. So we keep working. And I'll leave you actually just, I think, with um, more of a, a thought. Uh, in terms of our far futures, what we're thinking about here, the, the work of the lab. How come Earth didn't get an embassy? Every nation got an embassy, right? I used to live in D.C. on Embassy Row. So we intend to, to right that wrong, because um, Earth is, is Mother Earth and, and Spaceship Earth. We're all crew. You're all astronauts, if you didn't know it. And you're really zipping pretty, pretty quickly around the sun. So we're all here. And we have got to be active participants in this. We have got to get this together. We're all in the same lifeboat. And uh, so when it comes to, to, to climate, when it comes to um, living in balance with our resources and innovation all together, I think what's called for then is um, Earth Embassy, pop-up empathies. It's about the next generation for me and you see there. So an operating system to finish on a platform. What platforms you're thinking of? Well, I think I have an open platform called the Earth Operating System because Earth didn't come with a manual. As Bucky Fuller said, that's where we went wrong. So we intend to transform literally petabytes of data, Earth observing data, looking down on Earth, looking home to spaceship Earth, and saying, okay, here's all the data. The data is the easy part. Now, petabytes of data aren't too easy, but curate that, make these you know, wonderful visuals so people can take action. It's transforming all that data into action and on an open platform, working with businesses. I have SMEs here very intentionally because um, that's 350 million companies. And so if you want to accelerate positive change, I think uh, you actually start right there and empower um, all those companies. And then uh, Earth DNA data into action, or literally the DNA of Earth, 
uh, is all about the next generation. Those are the students, and so we have curriculum for the students and a whole bunch of uh, leadership and negotiation and storytelling, all the kind of all the skills that that our young folks need, uh, because uh, we're in, we're in good. You know, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, and we'll be in good hands if we can uh, just help you know, our students realize their, their incredible dreams. And um, so uh, I think this is the last one. That's it, simply. Like you got it right. It's a good philosophy just to make the world work for 100% of humanity in the shortest possible time without any ecological uh, disadvantage to anyone or any living uh, being and species, I would add. So that's it, we're on it. Um, big ask, but uh, great philosophy, what, three, four decades ago, and now it's time to, to realize, I think, this, this great hope. So thank you uh, very much for your attention. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, just wonderful way to, to bring this to a close. Um, so I'm gonna invite my co-chairs to come up and just share a couple of closing yes, words. absolutely. Um, and then what I would ask is if you're going to stay for a few can minutes, a if few people minutes? can approach Absolutely. you. Yeah. Because I do know that we're a bit over. So, Marshall, Peter? Why don't we take a Any live mic. Oh, you will. Uh, really trying to be loud here for a moment. Um, thank you. So, the MIT slogan, as most of you know, is meant at manos, or minds and hands. Can we give you some practical knowledge? So I started this morning, I tried to give you a summary of decades of work with a single framework that you could apply to interpret and understand uh, whether it's organizational structure, or industry structure, or strategy, or policy, or technology, and be able to predict and explain and to control. Because if you understand the design elements, understand the theories as well as the practice of how those things work. Those frameworks will actually give you the tools to help you build new systems, uh, comprehend those systems, anticipate how these systems are working. So I think that's one thing we really tried to do today. And then we also had a, several different wonderful instances of it, uh, applying it across experience platforms, talent platforms, financial platforms. In the future, we'll be trying it even for government platforms and environmental and sustainability uh, platforms as well. Um, and so again, one of the things that's distinguishing other things that have come before in traditional business models is products have features and platforms have communities. So I want to thank you again for being a part of this community and uh, promise you that we're nowhere near done. Even though it's 10 years yet, uh, we just got a national, half million dollar National Science Foundation grant to go explore new frontiers in platform research and see if we can make things uh, even better. So we promise to bring you even new content next time around. So we'll look forward to much more conversation. Thank you. I would like to thank you all for coming, both in person and virtually. We had quite a number of people online today. And um, I think it's a testament to you know, what we've done here and the people we've brought together that the platform space is, is really interesting intellectually, but it's also very important, right? Because it impacts um, not just companies, but whole economies. I mean, it's becoming really big and important. And so I think one of the things that I'm excited about is that we're actually cultivating a community of platform professionals. And it's a really exciting and interesting career opportunity for folks. And so I, you know, I've learned a lot from this community, and I think it's a fantastic community to make sure that we're pushing the edge and that we're cultivating it. We, you know, we have folks that are teaching it to bring up the next generation, but bringing in people that are platform professionals and making sure that you know we can bring come together, uh, learn from each other. Um, because it's, it's big and an important space. And so I think uh, the next 10 years are going to be quite phenomenal. I and mean, we just saw <laughs> the, the, the world view, but even down on our little earth of platforms, it is also pretty big and exciting. And you know, things like Web3 are gonna make the platforms even more important because they're pretty dominant in that space. So thank you very much for you know, all of that you've done to bring this event together. All right, thank you, Peter. So wow, 10th annual Platform Strategy Summit. 
a lot of great themes. You know, Web 3.0, I think a persistent theme is, is the value of data, and that one just sort of permeated. Um, but this last talk, Deva, I think helped expand and kind of position what we're doing, not just here on Earth, but the way that she showed how you can open up the data, invite other people in, innovate on that. I mean, that theme, every one of our speakers has at some level you know, sort of talked about that. And it, I was just thrilled that David could bring that you know, to this sort of broader academic um, industry sort of global partnership. Um, so days like today don't happen without a whole bunch of people. Um, we have this incredible you know, technical production staff. I just want to give you all a big hand. You know, it turns out that you very quickly have to pivot to hybrid, and we did that in real time, and they did it just with grace and capability. Um, but you know, no, no conference ends without the IDE team getting mentioned. So that's the initiative on the digital economy. You know, Kerry Reynolds, Tammy Bozell, the leadership team of, of Devin and Dave, you know, have really made this opportunity for us to be able to bring this to you. Um, you know, year after year and hopefully going forward. And I'll just echo Peter once again, you know, we wouldn't do this without the community that you in the room represent. And the fact that we've been able to curate this, build it, continue it over time is frankly your gift to us for which we're very thankful. So with that, we're done. Thank you.